Sometimes it's the little things in life that make a difference. A kind word from a stranger when you need a lift. A stroke of good fortune when you thought your luck had run out. Or an idea that pops in your head when you least expect it. For Charles Creeders, that idea was popcorn. Fresh popped on his peanut wagon, out where the people want it most. In 1893, that kind of an idea was no less than world class. And there was no more worthy place to introduce it than the Columbian Exposition. Inside this vast cavern of a museum hall, Henry Adams first discovered the magnificent dynamo, generating a new source of power called electricity. And just outside, Creters displayed his own small invention, a simple steam engine attached to a peanut cart that he would patent as the first popcorn machine in the world. Charles was an inveterate inventor. Before the popcorn popper, he tried his hand inventing crackers, bicycles, peanut roasters. But the Creters' popcorn popper struck a nerve with street vendors everywhere. And before long, Creeter's pushcarts could be found on street corners across America. The reality is that uh, Charles, C.C. or Charles Creeter started the concession industry because people, uh, there were a lot of street vendors out, and a street vendor sold an item. The Creeter's popcorn wagon sold two items. They were peanuts and popcorn, and then there was room for other things. In 1907, the Chicago Tribune published an article heralding the small fortune that could be made in popcorn. Sympathy is wasted on the popcorn man. We are often prone to think of the popcorn man as an unfortunate individual, aged or decrepit, cut off from legitimate lines of trade and barely eking out a scanty living. But such is far from the case. It is a poor stand that does not take in eight to ten dollars a day. Now, I don't know what the pay level was in 1907, but eight to ten dollars apparently was a pretty good living. Be not You want to be a public nuisance? Sure, how much does the job pay? C. Creters and Company, the name that now sits on every top-of-the-line popcorn popper in America, moved into a factory building on the west side of Chicago. And it wasn't long before hand carts and wagons grew into a line of Creters' snack trucks. Creters' popcorn machines could be found in drugstores, newsstands, candy shops, department stores, fruit stands and shoeshine parlors. And every year there was a new model. The most elaborate, carrying an array of snacks, gave way to a new expression, Peterson's Lunch. He did sandwiches, they, they had drinks, they had liquor, they had all sorts of things. They were traveling concession stands. When the cinema came to America, the popcorn vendors who made out best put their carts right outside the movie theaters. Popcorn was, was just about everywhere. It was, it was a fresh snack. It was something that people could eat. You knew it was fresh. By 1930, 19 million Americans a week were going to the movies. The Depression set in. Everybody was in trouble. Uh, nobody was making any money. And the popcorn vendors were anxious to move their stands from the sidewalk to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. The original movie theaters, they didn't want popcorn until they found out how much money they could make on it. And at that point, then they decided popcorn was a good thing. And it, uh, it kept a lot of movie theaters alive. Today, it's, it's a major part of their revenue stream. Lobby to get ourselves a treat. Having a run on candy? People have a sweet tooth, especially at the movies. As it turned out, popcorn and movies went together like Frankie and Annette. That's the name of the game. Today, more movie theaters rely on creators to make their concession counters a financial success than ever. Why, sir? Do you not know that for a mere 25 cents more you could purchase a large beverage? Medium is really only for suckers who don't know the concept of value. 
From its factory in Chicago, Creators manufactures popcorn machines for customers worldwide. The largest can turn out 5,000 pounds of popcorn an hour. The smallest would feel at home in anybody's home entertainment center. Well, we started with uh, peanuts and popcorn, and now we offer snow cone machines, cotton candy machines, uh, nacho cheese uh, dispensers, and hot dog cookers, too. Wherever people gather to enjoy the good things in life, Creators is there to provide the snacks. And it's little things like fresh pop popcorn or a juicy ballpark hot dog that mark the moments we never forget. As tough as things may be or may seem, people need to need to remember that there are still good times to be had. Um, a large tub of popcorn, please. Extra butter. We said popcorn, it's a favorite treat. Popcorn is what we like to eat. Can we have a wish for a great big dish of popcorn? Popcorn, please. Popcorn going up and down. Popcorn flying all around. Catch it on your tongue. Pull it out of your hair. Although sometimes, maybe you can get too much of a good thing. Honoring the past, engineering the future, that's the Creators way. I'm Bill Curtis, wishing Creators and company and popcorn lovers everywhere happy 125th anniversary.